darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hands for life. Hi everyone, so today I'm here at somebody's property and I'm going to talk you all through how to do a home check. So first off, we're at the front doorstep obviously. This would be a really awesome place to put a baby gate. Um, so you could put one, you could possibly, either, if you didn't want a baby gate at the front door, you could put one here, um, maybe like a more permanent one and that way you can have the front door open. Um, this family doesn't, uh, which, is, which is cool, but that's just a suggestion. So the baby gate's always good because um, if you're opening the front door, like say if you're bringing back the groceries and you don't want to use the back door, it's always good if you're opening the front door and then they're not going to just pop out the front door. Um, so yeah, cool. So we've got the front gate, the front door, and we'll move on to some gates. Oh, hello. Okay, so here we've got um, a smaller wooden fence, but this is still a really good size. Um, obviously your greyhound's not gonna jump over that. They tend to not jump unless you teach them anyway. Um, so we've got this wooden one here, which is a perfect height. And then we've got a couple of greyhounds. <laughs> And then we've got um, a smaller gate that's used for opening and closing and going through. And it has a little latch. Um, so as long as this latch is down, then you're pretty good. Um, and even if it's not down, I mean, they're not really gonna fit through that. So this is really good. This is an awesome setup. Um, so we'll move on to the backyard. Come on. So here we've got the backyard and this fence is honestly phenomenal. Um, this would win Fence Award of the Year. <laughs> um, it's, as you can see, this is, Ashley's a small greyhound, um, but she's never going to get over this. Um, and they can't, they can't see through them either, so if you have cats that aren't, dogs that aren't great with cats, then they're not going to really get wound up, which is awesome. Um, the backyard's a really good size. Um, that's pretty important. You don't want them living in a tiny area. However, some greyhounds can be apartment dogs. They just have to adjust to it. It's not that they hate small spaces. It's just this is good for going to the toilet. Here we've got the second gate for accessing the backyard. Um, this is awesomely sturdy and it has like a really intense lock here and it's super stiff anyway. So, you know, they're not going to jump through that. So we're at the back door now. I just wanted to discuss the back door because there's stairs um, and when you get greyhounds they generally don't know how to walk up and down stairs. So these stairs are awesome, they're, they're a really good size for teaching them how to get up and down stairs. You don't want to start with something too intense um, because then they're going to be like, whoa, too many stairs, scary. Um, so these are really good. Um, there are two greys that live here and they don't have any trouble with the stairs, one jumps up and down. Uh, and completely skips the stairs, which isn't ideal, but that's just how she does it and it works out fine for her. Um, so we'll go through into the kitchen and we'll show you a little bit of space um, and where is a really good space to have your greyhound for the first few days. So Here we have Tui and he's gonna demonstrate the crate. So when you get your first greyhound or your second or your third or your tenth, um, it's really good to have them in a crate when you first get them, um, say if you leave home for an hour or so, um, you can leave them in the crate and it, it gives them a feeling of a safe space. So quite often when people do adopt a greyhound, we recommend crate training them. Um, some have been in crates and some have not. Tui absolutely loves his crate. However, my girl, Ashy, is not as keen. Um, but it's not that she hates it, um, she just doesn't like getting in. But once she's in, it's okay. So all you do is you set them up with a bed and a blanket, however many you like, and then you can put water in by either putting a space for a bowl or hanging a bucket, um, which is probably ideal as they wouldn't spill it. 
Um, and this is, as I said, really important because it gives them a safe space. Um, if you get a greyhound and you're, you take them home and you just give them free range of the house, um, it can be quite overwhelming for them because quite often they've come from the racing kennels and that is like their safe home. Um, it's just like a bedroom for us. This is like their bedroom. Um, so it's really important and it really helps them transition into pet life. If you didn't want to do a crate, you could always section them to one area of the house. For example, we're in a kitchen right now. Um, and so if you wanted, you could shut the kitchen door and the back door in this example. And you could have them in here. You could have either a crate in here open or you could have a bed in here for them and a water bowl. Um, and then that way they have one room. So it's not as overwhelming for them. Um, it would be like you moving from a tiny house to a mansion. It's quite overwhelming and it can be really tricky on them. So when we first got Tui and Ashi, we trained them in a crate and it was really successful. We had no issues. Um, they were really easy going. So cool, as you can see, he loves his crate. He's like, woohoo, I'm off to sleep. <laughs>